Num num. I Brett Douglas with a piece of love reaction channel, and this is my co-host Lou. Lou, how you doing? Hi everybody, I'm Lou, and I'm doing fan fabulous. Uh, today we're reacting to Lincoln Park, a good ass band. I love Lincoln Park. So I so what? Well, okay, so the, I, I think this was probably like 2000. I heard this song first. I was on the gymnastics team for two weeks in my high school. Uh, my friend was on the gymnastics team, so I joined with him. He quit. I stuck around a little bit and then left. But I re it's so weird how, you know, it's, you remember the era where you first heard a song. I'm going to give the reins to her because she is uh, much better at analyzing the lyrics and uh, what it's about. We're going to listen to the entire song. Um, and I'm going to kind of analyze the music and everything. Um, but um, go ahead. Uh, take the reins, Lou. All right. So personally, Numb is a very an emotional song for me. It, it really resonates with me because as someone who has a lot of mental health issues and someone who struggles with a lot of... Un unreversible things like things that you can't get medicated for and won't go away and it really sucks knowing that having a personality disorder and autism and just a whole list of shit but that shouldn't make you insecure something as something you can't change is something you should embrace because the more you hate it the more you're going to hate yourself and you are too valuable to be hating on yourself and just make yourself happy with the the things that you have because they some of the time most of the time even it stays there forever it could always so, be worse and yes uh it could always be worse but to think that people really do think so low of themselves and really have struggled with mental health and it, body image issues and just a whole bunch of things. And it's just not fair to anybody. And it hurts my heart knowing that so many people out there are just so numb. Just so, yeah, numb. And it shouldn't have to be that way. You should always ask for help if needed. And you should always put yourself first before others. That's freaking beautiful. Um, There's so many young people I talk to that say, I hate myself. I'm so ugly. And, and it hurts me. And, you know, ugly is something that is in the heart if you have an ugly heart you know judge judy i, I know i'm quoting judge judy but she says beauty fades dumb is forever uh, i like that so i've become so dumb i can't you hit what i hit sorry um you hit his rear end of the car with your car. <laughs> you remember I, that? That was funny. No, but I, I've seen oh, too much Judge Judy. I've become so numb, I can't feel you there. Become so tired, so much more so much aware. Tell me. I'm becoming this. All I want to do is be more like me and be less like you. Who's you? The bad you? Is it too? I mean, there's a, a lot of ways. That's why the, uh, good songs have a lot of ways that you can interpret it. I was about to say the same thing. Uh, honestly, Numb is is one of Linkin Park's more popular songs because, it, you know, people resonate with it and makes it makes them feel comfortable because knowing that you're not alone in such dark times 
and, and things that seem crazy or um, unspeakable or just obscene, that shouldn't be the way it is because people do feel like that. It is a real thing. It is not something you should feel isolated for. This channel is is going to change uh, when Lou's here because um, if you feel bad and you feel alone, you know, r reach out to us because, you know, we're... We we want to be there for you. Um, we're all in this together, this this crazy ass world. Uh, we're all gonna about to listen to this song, but you know, put it in the comments. Introduce yourself. Um, and you know, we, we're we're trying to get a, a group together of good people that want to get better. Um, are you ready? I am so ready. We're gonna play the entire song. Um, no interruptions like y'all have asked. <laughs> That's my bad internet, not me. I didn't realize how fucking good that song is. Um, I, I, real fast. Um, I love bands that have two voices, two great voices. Um, and I am a big fan of building up your refrains. When they built that refrain at the end where they added every single part of it they even added the, the intro dun, dun 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 and then all of a sudden try to be what you want me to be holy shit 
powerful. I love, I didn't realize how good this song was. What, why am I not listening to this song every day? I love it. And, and what happened with the girl? I don't understand. Go ahead, Lou. It's like listening to the same, it's like listening to the song for the first time over and over again, especially with someone you care about. It's like listening to it for the first time and it's just so magical and just so awakening. And it makes you stop and think. It's, it's really, music is the gateway to the soul, to the mind, to the heart, in my opinion. So honestly, music that speaks to me is music like that. And it's just so incredible to hear and feel and breathe you know how you feel when you're not alone it's just like it's it's just changes your mood in an instant and it's just so interesting and so incredible and i just there's not enough words in the english dictionary to describe how music makes me feel in that song in particular but i string didn't did you is this is not part of your daily playlist when was the last time you played this song me probably five years ago this is in my daily playlist but it is mm -hmm. oh. i have a lot of like park and corn slipknot oh. deftone well link we are going to be exploring all of that um today is uh marquito day marquito uh requested a bunch that was really really powerful um what what was going on with the story i, I the, the music was just too good to, to understand did the girl feel alone while watching the music video you see um clips of her and she's in like normal speed but everyone around her is just sped up by like a thousand and it's it's just she feels so slow in a world of just fast choices and fast pace and just she doesn't feel the same as everyone else and that's how a lot of people feel i bet did you see when she was pushed down the stairs and then they kept oh, yeah. running mm -hmm. oh my god this uh Song structure is by Forte. I'm, I'm an expert at song structure, and that last that last refrain. I, I I always say if you have a an amazing refrain, you, you double it up, you do it twice. But uh, and they did it twice, but they added so much. Just that you never be what you want me to be, like that little. The chair. Oh. It yes. Yes, it made it just epic, perfect. Lincoln Park fans, welcome to the channel. Hit the subscribe button and let us know um, what song you would like us to uh, react to. What's that song? Uh, shut up, shut up when you're talking or shut the fuck up. What is that one song where you say shut the fuck up? Uh, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I'll fuck you up. No, that's not it. <laughs> uh, you got the it. motherfucking right to remain violent. Hollywood we're gonna, undead. We're going to check. It's probably going to Lincoln Park. Oh, I th it's probably in the end, right? Uh, Maybe. Let me just see a little. Shut up when you're talking to me. I think that's, what I can go. that's another great song uh okay well lincoln park fans uh support the channel hit the like button hit the subscribe button and let us know what uh, you want us to react to next um doesn't have to be lincoln park um we're uh we're gonna have, be having uh at uh in a couple days we're gonna be having lou day lou's gonna be showing me uh a bunch of her favorite songs she gets to pick 10 
and um and then old grandpa here is gonna be uh reacting to it but lou actually knows a lot of 90s uh and early 2000s freaking rock like lou i was gonna say lou is a legend i am gonna say it lou is a legend um shout out to what Marquito. I I could. you did that so damn good Keith. Thank you, Marquito, for requesting the song and being a patron. Yeah, uh, ate all the wanna, support. If you uh, for one dollar join Patreon and um, you can, uh, I say, become a producer. But really, uh, you get uh, three requests a week um, for a dollar. You tell us exact. You tell us what you want us to react to, and we react. Um, we are going to be right back um yeah uh peace and love peace and love peace and love peace and love shots whenever he wanted to at the time though with the internet being non-existent and dirt sheets only being read by a very small minority most fans had no idea about this all they saw and said was the all-conquering hero coming out on top and so they cheered this accordingly as it happened and well, with these positive reactions, the boss must have come out of the Royal Rumble that year feeling like the whole thing had been a blow-away success. That's not to say it didn't have its downsides, too, as, like many WWF pay-per-views at the time, the undercard was left severely lacking, with matches like Brutus the Barber Beefcake vs. The Genius and Ronnie Garvin vs. Greg the Hammer Valentine being forced to fill out the show. And before the company reached the heights of WrestleMania 6, there would be another blow as, feeling like there was no more appetite for women's wrestling in his company anymore, Vince McMahon formally deactivated the women's title on February 21st, with this making Rockin' Robin the last official champion up until the point the belt would be revived in September of 1998 and won by Jacqueline. Still, even if the girls were disappointed, this didn't give fans much pause for thought at the time, as their main focus was already on the upcoming showdown between the unstoppable force and the immovable object at the biggest show of the year. That said, that wouldn't be the only thing making WrestleMania 6 worth watching as, on the same card, fans would get to see the culmination of a year's worth of stories that included Andre the Giant having one of his final in-ring appearances, Dusty Rhodes teaming with Sapphire to take on Randy Savage and Sherry Martell, Rowdy Roddy Piper characteristically courting controversy when he painted half his body black prior to his match with Bad News Brown, and Diamond Dallas Page getting to have a cameo appearance driving rhythm and blues down to the ring in his pink Cadillac. But those were all on the undercard, and it was the main event where the real story lay. Hogan vs. Warrior for the title, winner take all. Of course, this main event may have never ended up happening if the Macho Man had gotten his way, however, as just a few weeks prior to the show, he'd gotten one more shot at the Hulkster during the February 23rd episode of the main event, a match that was originally supposed to see Mike Tyson appear in WWF eight years early after he was booked to be the special guest referee. Plans for this changed, though, when two weeks prior to this, Tyson would be knocked out by Buster Douglas in one of the biggest upsets in boxing history, with this ultimately being the reason that Douglas was brought in to officiate the match instead. But regardless of who the ref was, the result would end up...